On this episode, we're going to Clarkson High School to talk to Millie the Maker Girl and learn more about Maker Girl Mania. started Maker Girl Mania uh, about five years ago now because we started seeing a trend, especially I saw it in my classroom, where um, I, I wasn't seeing very many girls throughout my day. I teach the engineering and architecture classes. So throughout my day, I may only see two or three different girls. And I thought to myself, when I was taking my drafting classes when I was in high school, I was the only girl then, and I was the only girl in college taking classes, and there hasn't been much of a change since I, I was in those classes. And Lori Banizak, who does the technology for our district, and I put our heads together, and we wanted to come up with a way that would really kind of inspire and jumpstart these girls into um, learning about different types of engineering. I think that there's a misconception of what they think engineering is. If, if I walked into a, an elementary classroom and asked them to draw a picture of what an engineer looks like, um, I, I think nine out of 10 would uh, draw boys. So we wanted to start changing what we think of engineering and how these young girls see engineering because the data shows that by the time girls get to seventh grade, uh, they've already made their choice if they're going to be interested in science or math, and most choose not to. Um, the data also shows that only about 14% of women enter into a STEM-related field, and of that 14%, an even smaller percentage is going into uh, mechanical engineering or computer science. So that was our that was our our challenge. So we decided to make a fun event just for girls that let them explore all types of different facets of engineering. We have everything from coding and um, making uh, an arcade game to uh, learning how to uh, pour a, a little mold for themselves. And we do it in a way that's just geared around having fun for them. So my role at Maker Girl is that I play our costume character. Her name is Millie the Maker Girl, and she's a really sweet, fun-loving, engineer coal, miracle, <laughs> steampunk fairy type of character. She's really cool, and I think it's a really good opportunity for the girls to meet somebody who um, loves exploring and learning, but also doing it in a, like, fun, unique sort of way that not everybody tends to think about when they think about STEM. So meeting some of the girls, like this really sweet girl I met, she um, made her own costume to look like Millie's, which I thought was really cute and um, interesting that she found inspiration from somebody that I played and that I kind of like make my own. Maker Girl is an absolute blast. Uh, I have volunteered for Maker Girl once the actual event and also at their summer camp, um, which is also a great opportunity. Um, but the cool thing and the thing that I like about Maker Girl is that you don't have to be particularly involved in STEM to be able to help with it. You just have to want to help people um, explore other things. At Maker Girl, there's like a face painting booth and that's what I've worked when I've done it. Uh, and there's also things like arts and crafts, but there's also fun things like the robots. We have a few activities that the girls can partake in, one being a foundry in a box, which is this sort of assembly line that the girls go down to create their own metal aluminum sand casting. It's so cool to see the girls engage with those people and ask questions and really get involved in the whole making process. Without Maker Girl, they probably would have never had that experience. Something else is, that's pretty cool and that I learned not at Maker Girl but at Maker Girl Summer Camp um, was that like the smallest thing is STEM. You know, like if you are creating something, it's STEM. A lot of young girls don't think that like they're bracelet making or like mm -hmm. they're like tie-dyeing or any of the fun little creative things that they do like the nail art or stuff like that is considered STEM but it is you know and it's just a cool entry into that field. Especially cool. when they don't like 
use the exact mold or something that we give them and they kind of use our like instructions and then they go forward with it like they continue exploring and they continue their learning by creating something new or something that we haven't like actually given them and they kind of just do their own thing which is really what STEM and this whole event is all about like furthering your education and wanting to learn more about engineering and science which is really impactful on these little girls. We have about 30 different stations every year. We change it up every year, so every girl gets a different experience. Of course, we have some favorite stations, uh, like our duct tape station. Goodness gracious, they love to make little duct tape bracelets or little bows for themselves. But they can also change it and um, add a, an LED light to it and learn how to make something light up. So we try to make sure that we're hitting all of the different facets that we can so that when they come in, they, they're successful, they are problem solving, they're being creative, and they're learning all of these different areas that they may not get exposure to. And we're seeing a change here in Clarkson just in five years. We have coding clubs at all of our elementary schools at this point and at our middle school. We've had to add in additional coding and STEAM classes at the middle school level. We're adding coding classes at the junior high level. Our classes, we have a construction tech um, course that has opened up. And we're seeing more girls enter into our advanced math and advanced science classes. So we're starting to see a, a change happening, all because we wanted to make sure that more girls could have access to engineering and science-based projects. That's all for this episode, but we've got more to share with you next time on Make Your Optimism Come True, made possible by the Clarkson Area Optimist Club.